What's cracking, everyone? My name is Ryan, and today we are taking a look at the ZMF Caldera Planar Magnetic Closed Back Headphone. Now this headphone retails in at $3,499.99 for its stock build and accessories. Now, before I go into this any further, I do wanna send a big thank you to the ZMF team for sending this over to get all of my thoughts and opinions on this headphone. By the way, those thoughts and opinions are of my own. Hey guys, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel and like the videos if you do like them. Also. I do have a Patreon if you would like to support me there and get in on the conversations through my Telegram chat. By the way, thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers so far. Now, let's get back to the video. When you order the Caldera Closed, as well as other ZMFs, you can choose from quite a few different options to go with the headphone. For the Caldera Closed, you will get the following options. You can do the stock aluminum chassis, or for an extra $250, a magnesium chassis that will also drop the weight of the headphone. Then you can choose either the leather headband and strap combo or a vegan suede version, both at no additional charge. You will also get to choose two different cable options between balanced or unbalanced, or spend a little extra money or a lot and get an upgraded cable from ZMF. Now, lastly, you will get your choice of the stock hybrid pads or the suede pads, as well as a second set of alternate pads. Now, for an additional $150, you can choose the tuning kit that will get you four sets of pads, as well as both tuning mesh materials to go along with the stock mesh. Honestly, it's an excellent value considering that just one set of pads alone will set you back 70 bucks. Not to mention, this custom tuning kit allows for different tuning options. And by the way, all of this will come together in a nice Pelican case when you order a ZMF, as well as your personal warranty card. Build here is very typical ZMF and that it is nothing short of a superb piece of highly functional art that will whisper sweet nothings into your ears. Now, currently the stock wood of the closed Caldera is ash, and just like any ZMF headphone, each one will be unique to the owner. As in, that's just how wood is. It has its own fingerprint, so to speak, if you will, which is something I have really grown to love and enjoy about owning a ZMF. It truly is your own. The chassis here is aluminum, and the headband and strap are a soft leather. In fact, the strap is very soft in comparison to other ZMF straps I own, which honestly tend to be a little bit stiff and textured, but still very comfortable. I am really loving the softness of this leather strap. Now, I definitely want to pay some attention to the cups on the Caldera. It is unlike any other closed back ZMF we have seen. In fact, it was influenced by volcanoes, and it's something you can research further on ZMF's website and YouTube channel. Zach has some beautiful shots of the Caldera closed and the volcanic influence something my son and I couldn't even duplicate with his science fair volcano project that we try to put together, shockingly enough. Now, it is very unique shape in that it's an asymmetrical on the cup. It's also extremely lightweight compared to other closed back cups I've sampled from ZMF, such as the Verite closed or the Atrium closed. Total weight, in fact, comes in at around 500 to 560 grams, depending on whether you choose the aluminum or the magnesium, but, Let's not forget also the pads you get with the Caldera. They are the stock Caldera hybrid pads with top perforation. Then you get a choice of a second set of Caldera pads that vary from leather to suede. And these pads are super comfortable and seal perfectly to my head and ears as the inner cup. It's got plenty of room for your ears, your lobes, all the stuff, you know, that snuggles right into the cups. Now, before we move on, I also want to note that the shape of the cups are not only for aesthetics, but they are purposeful to assist with the sound characteristics of the Caldera driver. The 
Close Caldera is very unique in the ZMF lineup as Zach really went back to the roots when developing the CAM system, which is the Caldera asymmetrical magnetic structure, which also incorporates the Atrium Damping System, or ADS. Now, both are patent pending along with the Caldera pad design we talked about earlier. Now, the other unique part about the Caldera driver here is the low pass filter that also electronically dampens the high treble of the Caldera closed. And we will talk about this further as we get into sound. Now, finally, the specifications of the driver are as follows. 60 ohms of impedance and 94 dB per milliwatt on average of sensitivity. So make sure you have a nice enough DAC and amp to pair up with this headphone. I mean, you wouldn't buy an expensive car and fill it up with cheap gas and oil, right? Yes, I have made that mistake on previous videos. So I've tested the Caldera Closed with a few different setups in-house here. Now I had been using the Bifrost 264 from Shit as my DAC. I have since updated that to the Hollow Cyan 2 DAC. However, I am fortunate enough to have on loan the Hollow May and Bliss stack. And I've used that stack quite a bit with this headphone and wow. Now, as for other amps, I've gone portable using the DC Elite and even the WooTube Mini. I've also used the IHA-6 and newly released IHA-8. And yes, I will be doing a review of the IHA-8 soon, so stay tuned for that. Then lastly, I have also used my HA-3A, which is a transformer coupled tube amp. Now, all of my testing was used with Tidal, going through Rune, and my Hollow Red streamer. So I have a pretty good understanding of the sound profile of the Caldera Closed. Sound profile. Kind of sounds like I'm some specialized hi-fi behavioral unit getting ready to deliver the profile. Yeah, I, I don't think that highly of myself. I should also note here that I want to focus on the stock sound, as in the stock hybrid pads with the stock mesh tuning. Now I will be doing a follow-up video covering different mesh options and pad options, as I was sent over two sets of pads and the alternative black mesh from ZMF. Now, from all my testing, I can tell you that the Caldera Closed has a very balanced frequency response. It extends very low into the sub bass, as well as reaches up high into the upper treble for that extra bit of air and space. Mids are full, lush, they pump your ears with information. The energy of this headphone is undeniable as well. It has a tack, but it also has a sweet sense to the voicing, so I don't get fatigued when I listen, but I get very engaged with that surprisingly house ZMF sound. And I say surprisingly because it's a sound I've grown very accustomed to with their dynamic driver headphones. Now, this being a planar, it definitely maintains aspects of that lively sound. Now, I don't wanna get into pad swapping for this video, but I do think it's worth sharing some information on the different pad options as to how they will affect sound in general. For that, I am sharing the examples straight from ZMF site so you can get the idea of how each pad can change the frequency response of the Caldera Closed in its subtle ways. Now, again, I will do a more in-depth look in a future video. There were so many track samples that I wrote down as I enjoyed my listening time with this headphone, but I wanted to pick out some tracks to showcase some of the unique characteristics I found with the Caldera Closed. Now, first up is the track Fever by Malia. This version caught my attention right away. The best word I know how to describe what I heard was simply alive. The opening of the track has this low end just slam that feels very wide in the head stage. Then her voice kicks in and expands every bit of that stage, creating this extremely engaging, full sounding performance. You feel her voice on the mic and it is truly a treat with this headphone. Now, I would not call it forward, but definitely focused without losing out on the rest of the instruments and weight of the notes. Now, the second track is by an artist I have really come to love, and that is Marson. Now, the track is a rendition of Sweet Dreams by Marilyn Manson. One thing 
that really stood out for me on this headphone were the moments when you hear the words of the song being whispered over the string instrument. Sweet dreams are... Things like that. Now again, it points to the focus and those killer details you can pull out with this headphone. His guitar is surrounding. The bassist fills in every bit with complete accuracy and it is tight bass. The low end is thick, full, but never overpowering. It's what you would come to love a planar bass while also having that heft and attack. It is fantastic. Now on a general basis, I tried plenty of other genres as well and I never got too stabby in the trouble. It never got shouty in the mids and did not feel recessed as long as you give this proper amplification, which I would say is more focused on current than just straight voltage. Now, things like the IHA-8, for instance, with the hyper mode, did very well with this headphone. Hard rock, rap, and even electronic type music never felt like things were missing. There is plenty of layering here as well, and this headphone can get deep into the stage when it needs to, not to mention spot on imaging. I'd almost characterize it as overall a more warm experience while delivering precise accuracy. This being a close back, I would not say it's a completely isolated feel, but no doubt it doesn't have the drawbacks of an open back from things like sound leakage or shared music experience. I'd like to call it when others are around. So I think it's an important comparison to talk about the Atrium Closed simply because it is another closed back in the ZMF lineup, albeit a dynamic driver. Now, in this case, I would choose the Atrium Closed if you desire just more bass, more low end, more slam. It can be bitier as well, and depending on the pads and amps, can fatigue. Now, I found the Atrium to be my own guilty pleasure of a complete bass headphone that doesn't miss out on the other details as well. Now the Caldera Closed trumps the Atrium, however, when it comes to that sweet upper airiness and accuracy of all parts of the frequency response. Now both headphones can scale, but the Caldera Closed really shows that scalability when paired up with the likes of the Hollow May and Bliss stack. Whereas the Atrium Closed is a ton of fun to put on an OTL tube amp. Now I also want to mention the DCA E3 that I love so much. It is almost half the price of the Caldera Closed, but it does an amazing job of details I speak to from the Caldera. The E3 can also scale quite a bit. However, it does hit its limitations when it comes to the attack nature, and that house sound of ZMF just won't be found on a DCA headphone typically. I can attest that the E3 does the best I have heard for a punchy and slammy experience from a Dan Clark audio headphone. So my thoughts on the Caldera Closed is simply TOTL. It truly is a top of the line headphone in my opinion. It could easily be an end game for anyone. I think the person going for a Caldera Closed would have either a future upgrade in mind for their amp and DAC, or they're already there and they wanna complement that system with a truly excellent closed back headphone. Now don't get me wrong, the Caldera Close still sounds very good on even portable solutions like the ones I mentioned earlier. Hell, it even sounds great on a $250 shit Midgard. But I wouldn't recommend keeping this headphone paired up with gear like that as its permanent situation. It deserves to be unlocked, unleashed, ZMFified. There is such a word. It's not. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and my thoughts on the Caldera Closed. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments down below. I thank you all for taking your time to watch, and I will see you in the next one.